Hi everyone. Today I'll be showing you three simple ways to experiment with camera lens perspective and fisheye effects in your illustrations with Clip Studio Paint. There are many reasons you might want to use perspective shifts and other camera lens effects in your illustrations. We're starting with a simple beach and sky scene where everything is shot in a straightforward way. There's no lens effects or distortions, but we want to add a fisheye effect. So first we'll go into filter, distort, and fisheye lens is one of the preset settings. Now there's a few options here between distortion, area, radius, and shape. Radius and shape will affect the area of the layer that gets affected by the distortion if you change the area tab from entire selection to selected area. Distortion simply controls the amount of distortion that's applied to the image, basically how much it's wrapped around that fisheye sphere. You also have a preview toggle that you can turn on or off so you can see the effect before it's being applied. Once you have something that you're satisfied with, you can hit OK and apply the fisheye effect. Really high levels of distortion will make scenes barely intelligible, so you want to stick to something around the 50 to 70 range depending on your application. Since adding the fisheye effect will usually add these white borders to your image, you can go under Edit, Transform, and Scale to resize it so that it fits into your scene again. We'll take a minute to position it properly, and now you'll notice that the horizon point of the beach is still straight, but our clouds now follow this natural archway path, which is pretty common in pirate-themed and seafaring illustrations or TV shows where it looks like clouds above the ocean are wrapped around almost in a circle. If you had a taller illustration to start with, with more striated levels of clouds, then you can add the fisheye effect to a greater extent without losing too much of your image in the corners. In the distortion filters, there is another option below fisheye called geometric distortion, which applies a really similar effect, but without the ability to control the area that gets distorted. The next thing we're going to do is adjust the perspective settings on the 3D camera subtool. The first thing we'll do is add in our 3D drawing figure from our materials palette and arrange them on the scene. Then we can rotate to try and get a basic position. You can click on the wrench icon at the bottom of the 3D figure to open up the subtool camera detail. Under the camera setting, you'll notice a slider under perspective. There's also a toggle for linking camera advancing and retreating to the perspective slider. This slider will determine the perspective of the shot. And you can see that there are pretty much extremes in both direction. We can go for an extremely distorted zoomed out view or a very distorted fisheye view to the point where the character literally looks like they're coming out of the screen. With a little bit of posing and camera rotation, you can use this effect to create things like a selfie wide angle shot, which is what we're trying to do here with our character. It just takes some time to get into the right pose. Now you can add more 3D objects to your scene and adjust the perspective on the camera there as well. And you could do things like replicating a security camera footage or looking through a peephole or things like that, which would normally be demonstrated with a extremely wide angle view. Whether you're trying to recreate realistic camera effects like peephole, security camera footage, iPhone selfies, or just emulating a fisheye lens like people would do in skateboarding videos, or you're using it for a more stylistic and artistic effect with dynamic poses, creating a sense of speed or focus on a subject. There's tons of ways to use these filters and effects to take your illustrations to the next level. The last and most simple way we'll implement a fisheye perspective is by creating a perspective ruler. Under layer and ruler frame, you can click create perspective ruler. Small window will pop up asking you how many vanishing points you want your perspective to have and there's even a toggle for fisheye perspective. So you want to turn that on and it will apply a ruler to a new layer. This will make it so that all of your draw strokes will now follow the path of the ruler as long as your snapping guides are set to follow the ruler and the ruler's turned on. Now, depending on your scene, this original frame for the perspective ruler might be too big. So you can go into edit, transform and scale so you can scale it to make it smaller. Maybe you're on a manga page and you need this to fit within a scene because you're creating a fish eye panorama view inside of one of your panels. And it will adjust the way that, that the strokes are affected so that you can more easily create things like interior spaces and architecture. It can also help with backgrounds and aligning things better. I think the simplest way to get into using these effects is just to add the fish eye distortion filter to an existing piece of artwork that you have. Maybe you can reimagine some compositions and see how things would look if they were framed differently and have some fun with it that way. If you're already familiar with using the 3D drawing figures, then using the camera perspective slider could be another easy way to get into it. 
and you can create some really interesting character compositions with those tools. The, perspe the perspective ruler is where things get a little bit more complex, since not everyone knows how to use them appropriately, especially with the snapping guides, but they could be really useful specifically with architecture and backgrounds. I hope you're able to use one of these methods in your own art with Clip Studio Paint. It can be fun to play around with recreating realistic camera's perspective effects to add impact or immersion to your illustrations. Feel free to leave a comment or share your thoughts below and have a lovely day.